bless you, people of the Most High God. My name is Clarence, and I'm pastor of the United Body of Christ Church. I give an honor to God, who is who should be and always the head of our lives, even His Son, uh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the one that reigns and rules over the kingdom of men, um, and also the Holy Ghost. Give an honor to the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us uh, in the ways of the Almighty God. Folks, I take this opportunity to welcome you back to another edition of what the Bible has to say about. And today we will be talking about the conversation piece, a practice in witnessing. Uh, I think it was sometime late last week. It should be a short video, so we'll get right into it. I believe it was late last week. I uh, got an email from a sister of ours that... that um, follow our, our, our website or and follow our videos and she was saying that um, the Lord sends people her way and um, she wanted to know how to uh, minister to them or how to witness uh, to be uh, technically uh, to, to how to witness to them and I, I've never done a video on this and and um, I thought she had asked if, if we had a video or, or if we could just kind of help her out in the way. Because she really, she loved, the sister really loves God, as I'm sure all of our brothers and sisters do. And want to be used by God in this area of witnessing. So today we're going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, this, again, this shouldn't be a long video. We're going to call this the conversation piece. What the Bible has to say about the conversation piece, a practice in witnessing. Now, let's talk about the Great Commission. If you have your Bibles, go with me real quick to Matthew chapter 20, Matthew chapter 28, uh, and we want to begin at verse 19. Matthew 28, uh, beginning at verse 19. And let's look at what the scripture says here. This is what Jesus says to his uh, disciples. Actually, we can go up to Matthew 28 and 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them uh, first of all I've prayed over this I've before the camera cut on I've already prayed uh, that God will would, you know that God would allow this to be seed and, and to be sown into the the grounds of, of those the fertile grounds of, of my brothers and sisters hearts and that they would be able to use this seed in the planting thereof that the kingdom of God may expand here on earth even around those that the seeds were planted in. Amen. Uh, I believe this to be seed for the harvest. Uh, anyway, going forth was this, going forth with this Matthew 28 and 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Uh, verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always until the end of the world. Amen. Now, also, we want to go back and reference Matthew 24 and 14. Matthew 24 and 14. And here's what it says here. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So we're, we've learned in, in Matthew 28, we're given a commission, which is seldom called the Great Commission. And, and what it is, is that we go out just as the disciples went out to make disciples of others. Uh, the, you know, uh, stewards, if you will, followers of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus commissioned by the authority that was vested in him. Jesus went forth. And got, you know, made disciples. And then those disciples went out to make other followers of Jesus Christ. And what are these followers or what are these disciples? These are citizens of the kingdom of God. The kingdom now and the kingdom which is to tangibly come. Amen. And so they call it the Great Commission. And so it's all of our jobs. It's not just our job to just be saved and to go about our business. Uh, once we are saved, we become salesmen of the kingdom of God. The, we become partakers 
of the Great Commission. The Great Commission becomes our assignment. And we've learned in Matthew 24 why it's important for us to take up the charge and go forth and witness. Because our witnessing leads to the, uh, to the times of the end, if, as we will reread Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So it is important that we go out and we go and witness uh, as the Lord leads and, and as he guides, that we go out and we take upon this commission uh, to bring forth the kingdom of God, to give them the invitation to, to come into the kingdom. Amen? Now, so we understand this. When, when we're saved, we're not saved to just be saved for ourselves and just to care about ourselves. That's not what the kingdom of God represents. The kingdom of God represents selfishness, if you will, being less selfish, right? And, and just as Jesus gave himself to us, we give ourselves to the service of the kingdom and to our brothers and sisters. So we go forth and we go and proselytize, if you will. Now, so the question is, how do I, my, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. How do I go about and, and do this? Because when people come my way, I'm lost. I don't know what to say. I, I, I baffle my words. How do I, and I'm nervous about this. How do I correctly take on this charge? Now, let's go real quick to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. And let's see at least what the scriptures have to say about this. Let's see here. 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, beginning at verse 13. Now again, I, I'm not. It's I get a little nervous sometimes, you know. Um, <laughs> and I, the bit, the the one time, let me share this story with you. When we first got started in ministry, we were living um, in an apartment building uh, in Oak Park, Illinois, and I had just got ordained. Um, I had been ordained as an evangelist, and it was prophesied uh, that I would be uh, become a pastor and that I would end up pastoring. And uh, so I was, for a little bit, I was, I was an evangelist. Well, the time came that the Lord moved me into the office of pastoring, gave me a little bit more res uh, uh, responsibility, <laughs> and for me it was a little reluctant, right? But nevertheless, he, he moved me into the office of a pastor and uh, had us to, you know, to he began to establish the foundation for us. And so I went looking for a place to have the place of worship. And I mean, I, we were going all around making different, different appointments to look here and to look there. And, um, you know, in places that, that, I, that I thought would be good for us turned out uh, either they were taken or, or when we finally got a chance to see these places it just it just wasn't there and one of the ladies that was showing us around we were looking at a park district I think in Chicago at the time and one of the ladies that showed us this particular park district the facility that was on this district she said to me she says if if it be the Lord's will he'll have a place for you and so, you know, I was a little discouraged because, you know, if I'm like, well, if God has called me to do this work on this scale, then I want to go in all the way and I want something boom pow, if you will, right? Well, one day it's like the Lord spoke to me and he says, I want you to have your services in the lobby of the building that you, that you currently reside in. I want you to have services there. And I, I was like, what? <laughs> so, you know, it's, because I knew that we couldn't just go down there and set up shop. And it was very nice, elaborate lobby. Uh, it was, I mean, very nice uh, couches, and, you know, leather couches. And, uh, you know, I, I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they, they, I think they had a piano. It was two sides of a lobby. There was a hallway that divided, a walkway that divided the two rooms there. But the Lord wanted us to have our services there. And so I knew it just wasn't a matter of 
you know, getting the equipment and setting up there in the lobby, I knew that we needed to go through the proper channels to get it done. And let me tell you something. This is one of the <laughs> this is one of the hardest calls that I ever had to make. I had to call the the uh, the building manager, and and I was hoping that I could leave a message. And I remember my call. I remember the message that I left. It was I was saying, hey. Uh, this may sound weird to you, but um, we, we, we've we established a church, and, and I believe that we're supposed to have church, um, have our worship services in the lobby. Uh, so I'm, I'm calling to, to get permission from you. You know, I'm one of the tenants in the building, but I'm calling to get permission uh, that we can host our services in your lobby. And if it's going to be a problem, you know, get back with me. And and the best thing for me was that I end up leaving a message because they didn't answer the phone at the time. So I left a detailed message. So I did what I was supposed to do. I opened up my mouth and it was a little scary for me at the time, but I did it right. And I think it was we ha and we went forth. We went forth with the services. We set up downstairs and people were walking by. They would come in from the street to go up to their apartments and they would walk and, and see at the time it was just my family having these services, right? And uh, they would end up going up. Well, it was about a week later that we were just, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it, was about to, it just made me think of how funny it was at the time because I was so nervous. But uh, a week later, the, the uh, manager called us back and was like, hey, I got your message and wonderful you guys go ahead and we have no problem with you having uh worship services uh in the lobby and uh if we have any complaints from any any uh, uh other tenants there we'll take care of it you guys go forth and do what you do and it got so the lord has given us so much favor uh when when this all started up that it became an a, a selling point that when they would uh show their different apartments in the building it, one of the, the selling points was that there is, a, there is a church in the lobby. Now, my point in telling that story is we get a little nervous. Um, God knows that you may be a little nervous about things, but what he needs you to do is open your mouth <laughs> because he wants to do something great through you. But it all starts with your participation and your cooperation, right? So let's look at what Peter has to say here. Let's look at what Peter said. This is chapter one. This is a first Peter chapter three, beginning at verse 13. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? So when we think about being nervous and, and, and you know, we think about, you know, Lord, you want me to say what to who? Well, what helps is when you think about, well, what are they going to do? Laugh? Uh, in my case, with the uh, starting uh, services, uh, in the apartment building there. In my case, the worst thing that could have happened is he told me no. Well, he, because he told me no, was he going to go up on my rent? You kind of rationalize that what's the worst that can happen if I open my mouth and do what God tells me to do. If I look like a fool to them, so what? Look at what this next verse says here. But if you suffer for righteousness sake, Happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. So a lot of times uh, when we want to say something, when we want to minister to folk, we, we get a little nervous because we're worried about the way they look at us. Uh, we're worried about what they're going to say to us or what they're going to think about us. But the scripture is telling us that if they come at you in the wrong way and they begin to persecute you or they begin to ridicule you for what you said, it's better for them to treat you for, for doing right. It's better for them to ridicule you for being righteous in God's sight, for doing the right things, amen, for mentioning the right things to them. It's better for you to receive uh, uh, blows to your ego, if you will, for ministering ab about the kingdom. Uh, than for anything else, right? But also look at verse 15 here. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh that asketh you a reason of the hope uh, that is in you with meekness and fear. That fear is reverence. 
Now, look at this. We, get, we got a reverence for God. Uh, and we're not, we're not going to beat you with this word. So what, what, what Peter is telling us is, first of all, don't be afraid to, to, to bring forth what, what the Holy Spirit will lead you to say. Don't be afraid to do it. The worst that can happen is that they can ridicule you. But if they ridicule you, happy are you for being ridiculed because you you being ridiculed for the name of Christ Jesus. So that's okay. And and it says set a set a place in your heart, sanctify your heart uh, uh, for God, and be ready to give an answer of the hope that lies within you. God is going to start to send people to us. Why? Because people are coming out of the dark. And they're not going, when they come out of the dark, they're not looking for somebody else to keep them into dark. They're coming out of the dark to beacons of light. Our light comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. So when they come to us, they're going to want to know how it is that our light can stay burning in the midst of darkness. And so this is what the answer, this is what we have to be prepared to give. And so we do, the what we do is bring up a conversation piece. Let's talk a little bit about the technique. So we already know that we're commissioned to, to go out and to witness to people. We already know this. Um, and we, we already addressed the fact that we could be a little nervous, but even if you be nervous, it's better for you to, to just do it anyway. Because the worst that can happen is you make them angry and they get mad at you for you speaking right, the righteousness of Christ. It's you bring in, you're a salesman of this kingdom and you're coming at them in love and compassion. And, and if they get angry at you for you introducing them to the light and the love of Christ, uh, the love of God, which is found in Christ Jesus, Happy are you regardless because you did what you were supposed to do. Now, how do we get this done? Because the scripture tells us to, to be ready to give an answer. So what can I do when people come at me and, and ask for an answer? Or how do I know God is sending someone to me? Now, I work, I work in a public sector. I work in public transportation. And a lot of times I may have this one customer um, may not be anyone around, and, and I go from one area to the next. I go from one city to the next city, and so uh, as I'm doing somewhat of a public commute, uh, I'll have a person that chooses to set in the front, and they may be the only one on, on. They may be the only one that I'm transporting that day, and it'll be on me to open up my mouth and say something, right? Because that's who we are. We're salesmen of the kingdom of God, right? And so. Here is what I do. God has given us, and the title of this is called The Conversation Piece. God has given us a great conversation piece. Guess what our conversation pieces are? It's the topic of the day. The topics never grow old. Whether it's the earthquake uh, in Nepal with the death toll being over 7,000. Um, it could be volcanoes exploding. It could be about riots going out. Uh, the rise or the fall of the stock market. It could be uh, simply put just the weather, how the weather has changed from the time we were children to now. So God has given us conversation pieces. And, and so now what we have to do is perfect a, te a technique. And you say, well, Pastor, what are you talking about a technique? Why do I need a technique? Because the scripture is going to tell us to be wise uh, 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 to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So go with me real quick. Let's just actually read that scripture. Matthew, I uh, believe we want Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10 and 16 is what we're looking for here. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, uh, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And again, that's coming from uh, Matthew 16. So Jesus is kind of referencing our technique. He don't want us coming to people and trying to beat them. You better get saved or else, you know, beat them with the word or else you're going to hell. He don't want us to be that way because that's not the way God has drawn us into this kingdom. Uh, 
Uh, he wants us to have somewhat of a technique. And my technique is the conversation piece, which God gives me plenty of resources, which is the, the topics of the day, the, the, the events that have transpired. So, an example. Uh, I have a person that, that may sit in front, and I'll say, what do you think of this weather? How about this weather? The weather is far different from when I grew up to what I'm seeing now. Maybe I'll even get into a fishing story that I had two years ago when I went out fishing at this place called, place called Lake George. And within 15 to 20 minutes, it gets dark and, and the wind is blowing. This, and they call it a derecho or something. And it, it came through and, and, and I'm under a canopy, hail coming down. And those are great stories to, to talk about uh, concerning what the events of the day. And as I get there, as I begin to draw their attention, um, they may share some stories with me concerning things that have happened to them concerning world events. Um, and so in order to try the spirit that I'm working with, I'll put a disclaimer in there. I'll say, I, I bless God that I'm saved. You know, because if the worst should happen, you know, then I believe that, you know, that he's got me. I believe I'm going to be okay. I wouldn't want it. The way the world is moving about right now, I wouldn't want to be uh, outside. I want to be inside the kingdom rather than outside. And then I listen to, to what their response is based on what was just said to them. And it's all about the conversation piece. So when it says be ready to give an answer to the hope. I'm ready. I got, I got things laid up in me. Um, I got things set aside. I got, I got something that's already laid up. And so if they come at me and be like, well, how do, you know, well, I don't, they, they may say, well, I'm, they may get real quiet, which they let me know. I bet not, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm wise as a serpent. You know, I'm listening, trying to see what their response is because I just took it up a notch uh, when I spoke about where where I stay, you know, where my faith is when I begin to bring up faith. I don't bring it up too fast. Um, I bring up the ailments of the world because we know the world is sick and we once were part of a sick world. Now we've been healed by the stripes of Christ. We are healed. So therefore, I'm, it's good to talk about uh, you know these the the sickness of the world to see if they're a part of this world sickness, if you will. This is what you're listening intently for. Um, and then, as to say, harmless as a dove. Again, we don't want to beat them. We don't, you know, chastise them for being in this world. We listen to what they say. And some people, some people would be like, you know, I, I've been wanting to get saved. I just don't know how. Well, then you let them know because. People may not be ready. That's how I've heard that before. Well, I'm just not ready yet. And you talk about the peace that now you talk about you you're because you're selling the product, you let them know about the product that you've used and what it's done for you since you've been in the kingdom. You let them know uh, how you feel and 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 how things have changed for you. And not letting them know. That, that it's not that we're perfect now, but we but through Christ we have a better handle on things. We don't respond uh, to things the way we used to. And these are the things that people need to hear, that there is a better way. But the introduction of all these come by way of a conversation piece. What, what kind of commonality uh, can you and the person that you're talking to, what kind of common can y'all find, common ground? Uh, that you can slip this Mickey in, if you will, and then forgive me for the if, if if that statement offends some people, but it's metaphorically speaking for you to come up with a way to be sneaky or subtle about introducing them to the kingdom of God. Now, also we have to be mindful of of loving them as we're talking to them, being concerned, generally genuinely concerned. Uh, about their about their salvation, especially if you detect uh, that they're not believers. 
Uh, why? Because God has drawn us in with love and kindness. This is why we are harmless as doves. This is why we don't beat them. Uh, Jeremiah 31 and 3. Jeremiah 31 and 3. Jeremiah 31 and 3. The Lord appeared of old unto me. The Lord appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And we got to be like our daddy. When we come to people, we come to them with love and kindness. But we have to be careful to listen, uh, to kind of fill out which spirit lieth within them, if there's a spirit of peace or chaos. If we have their attention, uh, it's, it's like I said, for me, what I keep doing is talking to them about different events that's going on in the world. And, and I'll listen to what their input is. And, and if there are a lot of people, you'd be surprised how many people don't know about what's going on in the world. And uh, again, I don't want to exhaust them with so many, with so much doom and gloom. Because I don't want the doom and gloom of the world to foreshadow my joy that is within me you know i don't want to scare the men uh to to um to submitting to christ either <laughs> god is going to do that see right now he's he'll draw you in with love and kindness but if you don't accept that invitation then the next thing you know he's going to shake the world up and 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 through fear you'll seek after him right so as we do this in love and kindness we have to listen intent intently and be concerned for their well-being. Amen. Now, again, the technique uh, that I use uh, in this is, is to uh, minister to them concerning the day's events. Use the com using the day's events as the conversation piece to talk with them. And, and more than anything, when they begin to ask me about my hope, you know, how do you stay with this? What do you do that you're not uh, overtaken by the gloom of the day? And I tell them, look up, lift up. My, I keep my head lifted up because I know my redemption draws near. Uh, I begin to start bringing when they when they finally ask me about what what uh, uh, fortifies me, uh, what keeps me strong. Then I'll slide them the word. I'll give them the word. And I'll have a few scriptures uh, uh, prepared for them. Um, a lot of times the Holy Spirit may give you uh, something to give to them. Uh, you know, you could tell them, you know, the Holy Spirit may give you a scripture off the top, you know, put, put a scripture in the thought and take your cell phone because you never want to take stuff out of content or whatever. So you want to look up the scripture and, and give it to them and just tell them to read that and then tell them to read Romans 10 and 9 and Romans 10 and 10. Um, things like that. Invite them uh, to, to come out and maybe go to a park. If those of you that, that haven't committed to a place of worship yet, invite them out to eat so you can talk some more about the scripture. Um, but it's all about us being a salesman of this faith. The product that, that the world has been trying has not worked for them. It's kept them in the dark, and you'll see a whole lot of people when you begin to tell them about droughts in California or the, earth, the Nepal earthquake or just recently the earthquake that took place in Michigan. They get registered at a 4.2. Uh, different uh, uh, volcanoes going off. And you, uh, tell them about the drought in California. And just to name a few, which are conversation starters, a lot of people don't know about these things because darkness keeps them in the dark. Um, but it's good for us to know about these things because, again, we are selling hope and we're selling the kingdom of God. We're selling joy and peace. But in order to sell these things, we got to show we got to also let them know that what you've been buying hasn't been working for you. And um, spirit will lead you. So first and foremost. Sanctify your hearts. Be willing to do this. Know that it's your job to do it. Be willing to do it. Uh, be ready to, to testify about 
the very product that you use, which is the product of faith through Jesus Christ and what is done for you. The conversation pieces are always, the, you can always use the conversation pieces about uh, the world events and then kind of subtly come in there and let them know that you're saved, but subtly, you be, be subtle about letting them know that you're saved. I'm glad that I'm not where I used to be. Otherwise, I would find myself being concerned about these earthquakes or the collapse of the economy. Yeah, I would find myself being concerned. And they may say, well, how you been, uh, you, you been uh, a believer, how does that keep you, uh, keep you fortified? How are you not like them? How is that enough? And you begin to let them know what you used to be like. And then after uh, uh, buying the product and living the product daily, which is our faith, the kingdom of God, accepting the invitation of discipleship, uh, being a citizen of the Most High God, letting them know that since you've been in the kingdom of God, you've seen vast improvements in your life. Uh, your children, your man. Now, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> some of y'all got one foot in and one foot out and you're not seeing the benefits of being totally in the kingdom right um, uh, but uh, but nevertheless again folks is your technique if you're it's all about a conversation piece we're not trying to beat them we're trying to draw them uh, as God draws us with love and kindness we're approaching them with love and kindness and concern about their well-being we give them scripture when, we, when we've known that we've drawn them. When you cast that line to them and you know that you got them on the line and they ain't getting off the line, you done brought it in, then go ahead and give them some scripture. You know, give them some scripture, tell them to look at this, look up that, and, uh, and go from there. So that's been a crash course of what works for me. You may be nervous, but the best thing you can do uh, is, to, is to be obedient and just open up your mouth and watch the spirit go forth. And you may say, well, I feel like I bumbled. I don't think that I got it, got it out well. But the Lord knew who he gave it to to give to a person. When you think about Moses, Moses told God that I can't speak clearly. God says, well, who do you think made man's mouth? And when God told Moses that he made his mouth, God never went forth to fix the very mouse that Moses said was broken. <laughs> he, God never fixed it. God just said, who, you, who do you think made man's mouth? What God was telling Moses is, your speech impediment that you believe you have, I gave that to you and I gave it to you for a reason. So if God has assigned you to speak to somebody concerning something and you think that when you went forth and gave it, uh, um, that it wasn't clear, wasn't precise, uh, maybe they didn't grab whatever whatever it was or you feel like you got in the way, trust me, there was something that got deposited. Otherwise, he wouldn't have placed it into your hands. So remember, folks, all of us are commissioned to go out and, and to witness to the world. Amen. All of us, we have this job to do so. Um, you're going to begin to develop ways as you begin to do this you're going to be mindful uh there are going to be people that, that that god is going to send your way there's going to be people that he is going that he's going to send you to and that you may have to to speak and you may be nervous because these people may be people of political power great stature um but they're just ordinary men like like you and i uh and, and God cares for them. Otherwise, he wouldn't be sending us to them or them to us. He cares for them and he gives them the opportunity. And he's chosen you to help lead them into the kingdom. And he wants you to have treasures in heaven. God is just, he's just, he's, he is merciful and kind and true. And Jesus has commissioned you. I mean, Jesus, and then Jesus is with you. He just as he told the disciples, "I'm all. I'll always be with you." He's with us as we're doing these things. So, anyway, uh, what the Bible has to say about uh, a, a conversation piece, a practice in witnessing. I hope uh, um, 
may seem like I was all over the place. I hope that there was something there uh, that you were able to take out and apply uh, uh, to your lives, you know, and to, to help you in ministering because it is our job. It's not our job to just go into a place of worship and sit on a pew. Um, and the last thing I want to mention is, then this is important, um, there, go with me real quick to Mark 2nd chapter verse 17. Mark 2 and 17. When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And we have to keep in mind that the world is sick. And uh, because we are healed by the stripes of Christ, those that have not accepted Jesus Christ are still sick. And when people are sick, sometimes people don't realize that they're sick. And uh, some, other, some people do. It's our job um, to at least shed light on the, the ill condition of the world, if you will. Uh, truthfully speaking, the ill condition of the world uh, and let them know that there is a remedy a cure, and, and we're we're salesmen of the product of the cure, if you will. So, uh, I'll leave you with that. If you're not saved, get saved. Romans ten and nine, Romans ten and ten, and Romans ten and thirteen. Uh, also, the atoning, uh, the atonement, and that's found in the blood of Christ. You have no sins that cannot be forgiven, if you will, except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Uh, anything outside of that, your sins can be forgiven, your, son, your sins can be atoned for. Uh, you can find that in 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, please, if you are not saved, get saved. Um, what do you do after you get saved? You pray that God will lead you to a place of worship. If you haven't already been baptized, get baptized. Ask that God will lead you to a place of worship. Until then, and what do we do? What, what do we do? We are now the church. So what do we do? Do we go to a place of worship or, or do we just not go to a place of worship? It's wherever the Holy Ghost leads you. Uh, we're not to forsake the assembly of one another. We are to come together. We come together for the perfection of the body. And we also come together uh, to edify one another, but in praise and worship of God. We come before his throne. We come before his presence with thanksgiving. Amen? So, pray that God lead you to a place of worship. And until he has a place of worship, stay prayed up. Stay in this word. And begin to disassociate yourself with people, places, and things that have not committed to Christ Jesus. Uh, those things that try to draw you out of the kingdom and keep you in the world, uh, you separate yourself from those things. Stay holy so that when the time comes that Christ do lead you uh, to a place of worship, uh, that your gifts and callings will be there to help perfect the, our brothers and sisters in the body. Uh, pray about that. He'll lead you. He ain't going to just send you anywhere. Uh, he'll send you somewhere where you can definitely fit in. And if, you, if he haven't sent you yet, don't be dismayed. He still has an assignment for you. He still has use for you where you are right now. Uh, but again, after you, get, after you get saved and baptized, stay in your word. Uh, stay prayed up. Um, be, look, be looking to give an answer to those that ask you, how did you get where you are? How do you stay where you are? Amen. We love you. Uh, thank you for your support of this ministry. Thank you for your prayers. Um, and thank you for allowing us to be a part of your Bible studies. Until we meet again, God bless you, my brothers and sisters in the body. We love you. Amen and amen.